First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Koshi for pushing me to, uh, to, to, to submit this uh, uh, presentation because I was a bit lazy and uh, I think thank you for your push I managed to, to finally do it. Um, well, I'm going to share with you um, a program that we started in, in Senegal uh, a few uh, years ago, two years ago in fact. Um, the um, idea behind it is that we were organizing the first Africa International Sports Convention. And at that time, I personally did not organize a conference where people can enjoy a city, enjoy a hotel, and just go back home without uh, nothing behind it. And we were looking for a legacy program, and we thought we would do something to contribute to sport development in Africa. And uh, that's why we started this program called CISA Kids. CISA coming from the name of the Africa International Sports Convention. And uh, what we wanted is to have a program that would be money. Um, from 2006 until uh, whenever. Uh, we started in Senegal, we tried it in Nigeria last year, and next year we're going to Algeria. We hope in that so we can take it to every African city uh, in the coming uh, uh, couple of years. Um, the second reason for that is we live in a city that is growing too fast, and unfortunately we don't have uh, good politicians. I can say it here because there's no TV or radio that can broadcast it there. Uh, we have less and less space for kids, even for us, to enjoy ourselves, to work, and to do sports today. Many schools have to work kilometers uh, to find a space where they can do sports activities. And therefore, we have to find also a way to get these kids to do some sport and encourage them to do uh, sport. Um, one of the problem also that we've identified was that in most uh, Senegalese schools and also in most African schools, um, sports is kind of really uh, uh, not of interest today. Uh, government is not putting money in it. Uh, people, kids have little time to do physical uh, activities and physical education. And we thought that uh, probably a starting program like that would be helpful in terms of uh, uh, reinstating school at school. Um, well, um, the other thing also is today we live in a world of technology. Technology means internet, computers, and many kids more and more have access to those devices and find less time, less and less time to do and do sport. It was a way also to take them out and uh, get them to, to do sport. Um, the objective, uh, basically, having said all this, was first to encourage kids, kids to do sport, uh, to um, make sure also that we educate them through sport, uh, not only sport, and you see that we have some other activities that goes uh, around this program uh, to make sure that uh, uh, children learn through uh, sports activities and also make sure that we contribute to the democratization of sport. Right? The democratization of sport is unfortunately we live in a country where we don't have space, as I said before. Therefore, if you want to do sports as you have a kid, uh, you need a parent that has money so you can go in private clubs, swim, or play tennis and so on. For the other, there's not much. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that we give uh, opportunity to every kid to try themselves to, uh, to, uh, to do a school. It was not easy. We faced some challenge. First, when we went to schools and asked them to, uh, uh, to be part of this program, uh, they were, some of the teachers were looking for money because they were thinking, oh, this is outside our working hours, so we need to be paid. Uh, we also faced some challenge from the uh, government, as I said, uh, Ministry of Education and Ministry of Sports, which we have identified as main partners, didn't really understand what they wanted to do, therefore there was a little, uh, little challenge for that. Um, the other difficulty that we had also is to, we didn't have the, uh, the resources to take the program outside the capital, and we had therefore to work uh, from the capital for the first year to make it known and then after uh, be able to take it to other, uh, uh, other regions of the country. Uh, obviously, uh, we needed some equipment and it was not easy and uh, we had to go and uh, talk to international federations and when we uh, went out, uh, we are lucky enough to have a president of the uh, International Athletic Federation that is from Senegal and we went to uh, present the project to him and he sort of uh, really saw it and decided that he would support it. We got some fun there and uh, used the um, kids' athletics, uh, IWF kids' athletic program as a base uh, to uh, uh, do this program. Um, how does it work? Uh, 
basically uh, it's a sports culture and art program and to do this program uh, we wanted to really something I would say cheap, uh, like cost effective. Uh, we didn't want to invest because we don't have service post facilities. We, uh, the idea that we took was that we go to the school, we occupy the schoolyard for about two hours, we get all the kids outside the classroom and we started doing athletics and uh, doing some uh, drawing and paintings. Uh, basically, whoever wanted to do sport would do sport and if one was talented enough to do a uh, uh, drawing or painting, you would do a uh, drawing or painting. If the school didn't have a courtyard, which is the case of many schools in Senegal, then what we did is we just occupied a public space uh, where we gathered uh, five uh, schools or four. Uh, the maximum we've done is nine schools and organized them into school competition. Obviously, we needed the equipment, which was provided by IWF, and the other thing we needed was all the kids, because without the kids, we couldn't run the program. The targets. Uh, we uh, worked basically on the kids' athletics uh, age group, which is we divided kids into three groups uh, that we have here on the, uh, the screen. And we worked with primary schools, and we worked also with, uh, I would say, the non conventional schools, which are schools that gather kids uh, with difficulties, orphans, or some other street kids, if I might call them, uh, that are not part of the normal education system in Senegal. Um, we start the competition uh, doing it by age group, so 8 to 10 will compete separately, 10, 11 to 12 separately, and 13 to 14 in another group. Uh, we made sure there was a gender equity. Uh, even in athletics, we played as a team sport. There was always five girls and five boys in the team, and the teams were selected by the school, and we had uh, any athletes. We now have a training center in Dakar, which uh, got a lot of, uh, which worked a lot of athletes from Africa and we use them to come and uh, interact with the kids and we have about 12 minutes that we recruited and trained that we coordinated in the program. The program included um, four sub-programs here, sports program, with athletics at the base in the first year, and uh, from 2008 we introduced uh, gymnastics, judo, karate, and softball, and we do have also art activities and mind game. What I mean by mind game is not in fact chess game. We put the kids in a classroom and they could question about sport, about culture, about geography, and we selected the best ones. The program was run into two phases. Uh, phase one is what we call the Caesar Kids, which is the program that I've introduced before, and it runs for seven, six, seven months from December to, to May. Uh, basically, during this period, what we do, we visit every week or every uh, two weeks one school. Uh, as I said, we occupy the schoolyard and we organize athletics competition. The kids will run, jump, and throw, and every time they get points, and then after we do the summary of all the points, and then we get a winner, and then the winner is not qualified for the grand final, which I'll describe later on. Uh, as I said before, if we don't have a schoolyard, we get the kids outside on the street and gather uh, four to five skills to, together. Uh, we got also the, um, the elite artists participating, and uh, uh, as you can see here, these are the activities that we have. You can see here uh, that we have asked the kids to uh, uh, express themselves on a banner and give like their opinion about sports. They can do whatever they want. Uh, this is the mind game that I was talking about in the classroom where the kids are asked questions on different topics. And we did also some like, photo exhibition with uh, uh, top Senegal athletes from the 60s to now to get to know them. And these are our top athletes that we use. And here as well in a, in a school, as you can see, and all these pictures obviously are taken from outside school because in this case in the school they have enough space. Um, second phase of the program is after six months of going around the schools, we selected the best and take them to a final, uh, which is organized in a kind of festival, which is the first sports and cultural festival of Senegal for kids uh, aged from 8 to 14 years old. And this is happening in one of the biggest square in Dakar, uh, and it's running from uh, 1 o'clock to uh, 6 p.m. And when we started this year, it was funny because Senegal was playing against Algeria in the World Cup qualifier, and 
we will call the one week before uh, to, and we will ask to uh, sort of postpone our event because we were told that kids would not come. And uh, luckily for us, or uh, you know, luckily for the others, we had over 2,000 kids uh, showing up on the day of the uh, of, uh, football game, which is really the first sport in Senegal, and that shows that when you give uh, opportunity and choice to kids, they will respond. Uh, most importantly, we had uh, support from the IOC and the NOC of Senegal, and with the IOC, here you can see the uh, sport activities. With the IOC, we produced a magazine, um, and the Olympic movement and uh, the Beijing uh, Games, um, and for us, the next step, in fact, is to organize the same program for uh, the uh, uh, West African NOCs uh, next year, and with the support again of the IOC, we will uh, um, organize the tra uh, training of trainers uh, in Mali, and we also want to make sure that we start getting some grant for the kids that are performing well in this program uh, to help them to have better uh, study condition. Uh, if you don't mind, I do have a, just a very short video, so less than two minutes, and I'll finish with that. Thank you very much.